As always, we want to say thank you for making ZSportsLounge.com your choice and the 1.5 million listeners, the host of affiliates that support and send messages to us on future guests and the military bases. As always, we love you all. We're going to get a chance to go out to Trine University, talk to head football coach Matt Land. Coach, thank you. How you doing? We're doing awesome, man. we got nice weather. It's Friday Night Lights. We're going to go to one of the local high schools and uh, tailgate with some of the fam. Great. Sounds good. Coach, you've got a very unique opportunity there at Trine University. Um, they've just started joining playing football with the groups up here in Michigan. You've got a robust schedule that you're coming into, but you've got a lot of success in what you're doing in that program. Well, you know, it's been a long it's been a long road. Um, the year before we got there, they were 0-10, and, and uh, you know, we went 2-4, and four and, or 2-8, and 6-4, and four, and then uh, we were fortunate to go undefeated during the regular season and make the NCAA playoffs and win a conference title last year. So uh, it's been a long road. Now it's uh, time to su- sustain it. Absolutely. And I think when you have that success and you've got some new faces and you two years later – You've got some seniors and some juniors that have seen the message that you've given. They're probably able to help a lot with the new freshmen and the sophomores into the program. Well, that's a big part of what we do. Um, we have high expectations for our players, and you you just can't understand the expectations and, until you're there for a couple years. So we really do uh, rely heavily on our upperclassmen. Absolutely. And when you when you work out in a system uh, a situation and a conference like you have, you've got tough competition every every week, day, game in and day day out. You also have high academic standards at most of these universities, so you usually have kids that have really have a passion for playing, but they know that their career is not going to be in in the NFL. Um, it, it's it's got to bring a new spark to your eyes. You know, coaching in high school, you got a lot of kids who all think they're going to go to the NFL. Now you're at a university where their primary goal is to get that degree. And go on to get their doctorate. Well, it's really the only the only pure football left. High school football, and you know, I coached that for nine years. Is all about getting scholarships. You know, second division two schools, one double A, and division one schools are all about money and scholarships. So I really believe that uh, division three is the only pure football left because the kids come here to get an awesome education, and then uh, you know they're just fortunate enough to be able to play football and you know we've gotten pretty good at it so that helps out too so i I really i really love the division three philosophy yeah and a division three a lot of people don't realize that if you look on any arena football any if when arena football was around i gotta put that in cfl or nfl there are d3 athletes that are in those programs a lot of parents and a lot of students realize that their kids don't have to go to the d1s where they sit around for a couple years and get beat up before they even have an opportunity a lot of kids are opting and looking at smaller schools because they want to have a certain level of enjoyment in those bigger programs We've talked to many, many athletes, and I'm sure you have as well. There's really no enjoyment because it is purely a business. You go in, you've got to produce, or you're out. At a program like yours, they actually have a chance to enjoy college. Well, and they get to play earlier. You Absolutely. Know, if they're that, kind of, that level of a player. You know, instead of playing 10, 15 games, you know, at, a, at the big program, you're going to be able to play 40 of them, you know, and, and that that's one thing that we try and sell. But uh, Pierre Garçon, if I'm not mistaken, just caught the touchdown pass in the Colts game. You know, this week to win it, and he was a Division three player from Mount Union, so it does happen. Absolutely. We've got a guy over here that helps out one of the high schools, played for the Lions, was out of Westminster when they won the national championship, and, uh, you know, his name's Eric Stokes. So there's success stories everywhere. But I think the impressive thing within your program is that a lot of times you coaches wear so many different hats in so many positions, you've got to keep track of it. One of the things you don't have to worry about is the academics. The kids usually have already are in focus on that, but – you got to have people on the football field to help support. So who are those leaders that have really taken over the on-field discussion to reinforce the coaches' decisions in game day? Well, Adam Kurtz is a senior and a captain. Um, Eric Walker is a senior and a captain, and James Greenlee. This is my first group of seniors, and uh, so they've been through the good and the bad, and they, and they know what it takes. And they've done a really good job of leading uh, and teaching these other kids how to uh, – how to be leaders and, and how to be a Trine University Thunder football player because it is a very difficult thing to do. Absolutely. And you know, when you look at that and how young these faces are, you've seen them go through the hardship. Uh, you know, when they showed up for camp this year, a lot of those seniors probably had a lot of pride for what they did because they've seen how bad it can be. They absolutely do. Um, and the hardest thing for us was to make sure that the carryover from last year to this year was positive and not negative, and that's just coach's paranoia, <laughs> probably more than anything else. But we spent a lot of time during camp you know, concentrating on the fact that this is a new team 
and uh, you haven't made your mark yet, and we don't even know what kind of team we have, but it's going to be a team that's led by this group of captains and seniors, and it's going to be however it is that you want it to be. Because it's their team, not ours. Absolutely. And that, I think, the hardest part for a lot of kids, um, even adults, as fans, we follow a program. We don't understand why our team can't win a national championship every single year. But the reality is you're dealing with a lot of kids with a lot of pressures, whether on the field or off, and they are just young men. And we have to realize that as fans, I'm sure the alumni, and I know the coaching staff does, but sometimes those kids themselves think they're going to have it easier because they remember playing, you know, the Hope Colleges. They remember playing Albion from last year. Well, those teams are all different this year. Yeah, it's a new year every You know, it's a new team every year. It's a new team that you're playing every year, and it's a new season. And, and you've got to make your own mark. Um, there's some carryover, obviously. We're getting a little more attention than we have, you know. But uh, still, you know, every year it's something different, and you've you got to be prepared to lead your team. And, and the biggest thing is we have new leaders. You know, we have new people in leadership positions, and how do they react and how do they uh, take that responsibility? And, you know, that, that's so true, Coach, is how an athlete steps on the field and manage it because they are one year older, and a lot of them, especially the senior class, you know, you can't say enough about seniors on a football team with a nice size group and juniors to support that. Um, there's a lot of people who realize this is their last year to do something great. And so far in the season, you've had your way. So far. Um, you know, our first game, we didn't play particularly well. Um, Manchester played outstanding, and, and really they played a great game. Hats off to them. But one of the holdovers from last year that was a positive is, you know, we're down 14 nothing in the first quarter. Our kids didn't panic. They just kept muddling along and, and making plays and executing. And next thing you know, we win 16 nothing. You know, score 16 unanswered and come back and win the game. They didn't panic, and I think that was a positive holdover from last year. And then uh, game two, we we settled down and played football and, and really had a really good game. <laughs> I would say so. You've got Franklin Hope. You got your conference coming up real quickly on here. Um, your students, uh, I'm assuming they're in the video room studying the game footage for the next game, which I believe is Franklin. What are kind of elements that the students have sort of taken on the responsibility? Every program has one or two guys that do an awesome job of breaking down game footage and then actually carrying it over, particularly the D-line and the O-line guys. Well, the O-line, O-linemen are usually the smartest guys on the team, no matter what the uh, misconceptions are out there. I mean, they have the most important and most difficult job because they don't know where the defense is going or if they're lining up to trick them or lining up to lie to them, you know, as we talk about all the time. And uh, the different blitzes and the different fronts and the, and the different checks that they have to make on the line of scrimmage before you even snap the ball. And that's the things that people don't realize. It's the most difficult position on the field to play other than quarterback, the decision-making um, on the run. But, uh, <laughs> you know, people don't realize what really goes on up there in the trenches. And, uh, you know, those are my favorite guys on the team every year as an ex-quarterback. Yeah, that's my my number one. We had a fortune enough to have uh, the offensive coordinator from the brand new D1 football program out of University of South Alabama. They're going to be joining a lot of other D1s. But Gregory was fortunate enough to work on the Army team back in the 80s. And if you remember the Army back in the 80s, that was the team to watch. Absolutely. And his big primary goal is that he can take an average quarterback, average, he put a great offensive line in front of him. He will be a great quarterback because he will have time. And he says the hardest part to do is that game footage, you can look at talent and say, yeah, he can play. But when it comes down to offense and defense alignment, you never know what level of competition they are. And you're always like a crapshoot when you bring him in to figure out, yeah, they have size, but did he really play against anybody? Not everybody can be a Michael Orr from a high school and be a sensation at that size. There's so much more involved. And what are the elements you look at when those new faces show up for that O-line? Well, the biggest thing is we need to make sure that we know what we've got. Um, we are now at a point where we know, as a program, that we know pretty much the five to eight guys that are going to play offensive line for us. We have to identify that early and get them to gel as a unit. Um, so they understand, uh, you know, what the person next to them is going to be doing, and that's the biggest thing to get the, the offensive line to know that they've got to operate as a fist, one Absolutely. finger per person. There's five of them. They have got to operate as a fist, and the quicker we can get to that point, the better off you are. But I always show, look, remember the video clip or the the commercial clip where they showed David Carr uh, with no offensive line getting sacked all the time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For poor, I feel sorry for that guy. David Carr was a great quarterback. Yep. You can't throw the ball from your back, you know, and that's just that's pretty much what happened to him. Yeah, I think Kitna here in Detroit, 
Um, I, I sometimes wonder if the media actually watches the high school, the college games or the pro games because their analysis of John Kitna is so horrible. John Kitna was a, was a great quarterback. He had no time back in the pocket to throw that pass. And we saw that last year. We're seeing it this year. It is so important to have that. Coach, we're going to let you go because we realize we told you 10 minutes. We want to make sure we keep that on block. We're going to ask permission if we could contact you in a couple as you get further into your conference. Anytime. I had a great time, and I appreciate it. Absolutely, Trine University, Matt Land, the head football coach, and uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna jinx his program and compliment it anymore. But he's got <laughs> something special going on there. Well, we'll be we'll be all right as long as the head coach doesn't screw it up. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. One moment. We are off the. Air.